Is the RTX 5070 a worthwhile upgrade from the RTX 3080? In this video, I'm putting both cards to the test across six popular multiplayer games to find out. Whether you're thinking about upgrading or just curious about the performance gap, stick around to see the results. For this test, I was running my Ryzen 7 9800X 3D tuned with a plus 200 MHz boost clock override and a minus 40 undervolt to get the most out of the chip. It's paired with 64GB of DDR5 at 6000 sealed 30 with Titan secondary and tertiary timings. If you want all the tuning details on the system, check out the link in the upper right hand corner. Storage is handled by a Gen 5 AORUS 10K M2 and everything is running on a Gigabyte X670E AORUS Extreme motherboard. The 5070 in this test is a Gigabyte Win4 small form factor and the 3080 is a founder's edition. I pushed the graphics settings as high as possible in each game and tested at both 1440 and 4k native. Most competitive players won't run games this maxed out, they'll be lowering settings for better FPS, but here we're focusing on raw GPU capability to get a clear comparison between the two cards. Think of it like comparing cars on a racetrack, each game is like a different racetrack and the performance results or the FPS numbers are like lap times. They give us a solid way to compare relative performance but they're not meant to predict exactly what FPS you'll get in your personal setup or your preferred settings. So keep that in mind as we dive into the benchmark. These are controlled maxed out scenarios meant to highlight the true performance gap between the 5070 and 3080. Starting with League of Legends, I went into a live match and ran the very high graphics preset. In 1440, the 5070 showed a modest 8.5% boost in average FPS, but a more noticeable 18% uplift in 1% lows and an 11% bump in 0.1% lows. At 4K, the improvements were more consistent across the board, about 9 to 9.5% gains in average and low frame times. Nothing huge, but it shows the 5070 is still a bit more powerful overall. Next up is CS2 running the very high graphics preset. In 1440, the 5070 delivered a strong 15.7% increase in average FPS, but a massive 47% improvement in 1% lows and a 22% gain in 0.1% lows. At first I thought it just might be an outlier, but this was the average over three tests, and this was the result over three runs, so, so it is what it is. And it did feel noticeably smoother and more responsive on the 5070. At 4K, the gap narrowed a bit. The 5070 was about 10% faster in average FPS and 3% faster in 1% lows. Next up is Hunt Showdown. I ran the Ultra Graphics preset for this test. I ran a set route through the firing range for consistency. The 5070 pulled ahead decisively in 1440. There's a 17.2% boost in average FPS with similar gains in lows, nearly 20% in both 1% and 0.1% lows. In 4K, it's even more dominant, 20 to 22% gains across the board. So if you play Hunt and want Want better stability and headroom at higher resolutions, the 5070 is a clear step up here. Moving on to Rivals, I used the Ultra Graphics preset for this game. The tests were run on live domination matches on the Frozen Airfield map. In 1440, you're looking at 11.8% higher average FPS with about 15% better 1% lows and a 10% improvement in 0.1% lows. In 4K, the 5070 stretches its legs a bit more, 15% faster on average, and especially strong in 0.1% lows at a 21.4% advantage. Advantage. This helps to reduce stutters during heavy effects or fast action. Alright, last up is DayZ. I ran this test in the Extreme Graphics preset on a set route in Livonia. In 1440, the uplift is moderate, 12% advantage in average FPS with around 8 to 9% better lows. In 4K, the 5070 had a 14.3% advantage in average FPS and a 17 and 21% advantage in 1% and 0.1% lows, respectively. It felt noticeably smoother and more stable on the 5070. Looking at temps and power draw across all testing, the 5070 averaged around 170 watts while the 3080 pulled about 263 watts. That's nearly 100 watts more on average. In terms of temps, the 5070 ran much cooler overall as well, averaging around 59 degrees Celsius compared to 71 degrees Celsius on the 3080. The 5070 is significantly more efficient both in terms of power usage and thermals. That's not too surprising. While raw performance gains have been modest over the last few generations, efficiency has taken a big step forward. This is something to keep in mind if you're planning a smaller build, something with a lower noise target, or just want to reduce overall system power draw without sacrificing performance. So if you're putting together a new build or considering an upgrade and you play any of the titles tested here, how do the 5070 and 3080 compare? 
Right now, the 5070 is one of the few GPUs from the current gen lineup that's actually selling close to its $550 MSRP. After all this tariff stuff, actually the lowest price I'm seeing now is around $600, depending on the model and stock. On the other hand, a used 3080 10GB is averaging around $400 on the secondhand market, making it a strong value pick, especially for 1440 gaming. Performance wise, the 5070 delivers a 10 to 20% uplift in the games I tested here. But if you already own a 3080, that jump to me isn't worth paying one and a half times more, unless you're upgrading for very specific reasons. At that point, I think it's probably better to wait and jump to something like a 5070 Ti or 9070 XT. The 9070 XT at its original 599, dollar MSRP at launch is a no-brainer but realistically those are now trending closer to $800 to $1,000 putting them more in line with higher tier upgrades. Now where the 5070 really pulls ahead is in efficiency. It runs noticeably cooler and uses far less power, nearly 100 watts less on average compared to the 3080. If your build is power sensitive, space limited, or you're just trying to keep noise and heat down, that could tip the scales in the 5070's favor. And if you're starting a build from scratch, the 5070 is probably the easiest new gen GPU to actually get your hands on at a semi reasonable price. Despite the early controversy from Nvidia's marketing hype, the card itself is solid for the money, especially when you look past the 5070 equals 4090 comparison BS and just judge it on real world performance. All right, that's all I got for this one. If you found this comparison helpful, you might also want to check out my benchmark comparison playlist. Got a ton of different hardware comparisons in there. If you got something out of this video, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It really helps the channel grow and keeps content like this coming. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.